wandering woodender here with uh, well I guess it would be called a coaching video uh, I'll slay the spire um, I'm a little bit leery to call it that because I'm probably not all that good of a slay the spire player myself so like who am I to coach somebody but I do think I have some advice that I can give to the player here um, but mostly it's it's just trying to get people to be thinking about the right questions um, more than necessarily trying to give the right answers, although I will be giving my opinions. Uh, that is, in some cases, there are some things that are just, just wrong that we're going to see. But uh, in a lot of cases, it's mostly to get those right questions set up and to, uh, to you know get the right questions in the mind, but also to, to start the discussion so that we can all be improving, myself included, uh, perhaps myself especially, um, but that we can all be improving and, and thinking about the right things and having a discussion about what the best thing is or not, um, which can both help us all improve, but also hopefully be somewhat entertaining. Um, the subject today, uh, who we're talking about, the, the person who is, uh, sent this in is, is Screw You, a.k.a. Jake from the Adam Horton Podcast. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is Slay the Spire. He's on Ascension level, Ascension Mode 6, and uh, he's playing with the Silent. Um, very first thing here is that uh, you have these Nyao options. He doesn't take a lot of time here. Uh, so... Uh, I, I want to mention that he he'd gotten a little bit of feedback before this from Gazbag, who's also doing one of these videos on this, and uh, I expect that his video is probably going to be better than mine. So hopefully I can link that. Um, but the, he's already gotten a little bit of feedback in our in our Witch Chord, uh, and that was to at the beginning look at the map, and I think when when he said at the beginning. He meant now, before you choose your Nyao bonus. Uh, you can, if you click on the map here, you can see what the map layout is, and that might affect what you want to do here. Uh, for me, the time where I most notice it having that effect is if you, one of the options is the enemies in your first three combats have one HP. Um, in that case, if the map has it such that I can hit an elite, which was only going to have one HP, then that's really, really, really good, and I'm much more likely to take it. Um, but it's also going to potentially have some things just so that you like know what the boss is or whatever. Um, as for the actual choice here, uh, I would also go with the same thing that, that uh, Jake did, which is to say uh, getting the common relic as opposed to choosing a card, which can be good. It's also pretty decent. Curses are so bad, I would not get it to choose a rare card. Also, the rare cards have a decent amount of duds, and switching your starting relic is really high variance. Um, some of the boss relics are really bad, and while Silent's starting record isn't necessarily the best, it's pretty good. Anyway, um, then when we he starts to look at the map, Jake, uh, you say that you try to avoid enemy combats is the thing you prioritize, and I think that's a little bit weird and a little bit off. Uh, generally, you want to be looking at what you're looking for, uh, so whether that's looking for question mark slots uh, or looking for shops. Here you have 99 gold, so an early shop isn't that great. Um, usually you want to get to your shop a little bit later. Um, and then elites. Elites is a big deal, and if your goal here is just to beat the game on Ascension 6 and unlock Ascension 7. Um, with the Silent in particular, I think you probably want to be avoiding Elites for the most part. Um, now, maybe this is a little bit off since I've been playing a lot of like Ascension 19, where the Silent playing against Elites is usually a recipe for kind of disaster. But the Silent in particular isn't well suited against these early stage Elites, uh, or Act 1 Elites, I guess I should say. In particular, so you have the Gremlin Knob, and that you can't be playing skills against, or it's going to hurt you. I mean, you can, but you generally try not to. And the Silent, in particular, is a class where you generally want to be playing a lot of skills, so that that combat is pretty hard. 
And then the other two, you kind of need to kill quickly. The Sentinels are eventually going to fill your deck with a bunch of junk. That's the fight that's probably easiest for the Silent out of these. Um, but they are going to fill your deck with a lot of junk if you don't kill them quickly enough. Uh, and then the, the Log of Ulin, am I saying that right? Anyway, that guy, uh, if you don't kill it quickly, is going to drain all of your strength and decks, and then you're, you're going to die. So you need to be able to kill it quickly enough. And Silent is generally not a deck, in my experience, that's great at killing quickly. Poison can kind of get around that a little bit, so um, that one's not as bad. Gremlin Knob is probably the worst, and none of these are, like, unbeatable. But uh, it, going in the left here, you end up on a path where you have to face two elites, which is a little bit dangerous. You go the right, uh, as we look at it, you have some more options. Um, so, but I don't, I guess the other point is avoiding the regular enemies. Uh, at the start of the game, regular enemies gain you gold, which is good for events and shops. Um, there's some events that take gold anyway. It's good for shops, especially. It's also the main way that you're adding cards to your deck uh, to improve your deck. And especially here, uh, these first regular enemy combats aren't likely to be able to deal you that much damage. So there's not a big downside to them. So I really wouldn't be trying to avoid them so much, especially early on. Um, so you look at you look at what you're doing up here, and here you can, I would probably be trying to get these question marks, go to this campfire, go to this question mark, and then you have the option, right? Let me see if I can back this up a few seconds. You get the option here, uh, if you take this path of, I can take an elite, or I can avoid the elite, depending on you know how my deck is, or I can go up here and take another campfire. So once you get to this point, you can make more decisions. So I really like the right path better than the left. It's probably not a huge deal. You take the left. Um, the first combat in the first turn is the first interesting play decision point. Um, so you look at two options here, but there's really three. Um, so you can either strike, strike the front line and survivor and take two damage. Uh, or you can strike, survivor, defend and take one damage, which is what you do. Or you can go survivor, defend, defend, take zero damage, but deal zero damage. Um, your last five cards here, let's see if I can remember what the silence starting deck is. Your last five cards should be one defend, uh, three strikes, and uh, your neutralize. So probably, well, that means that either way, uh, you're going to be able to kill this next turn. And then uh, if you neutralize, you go strike, strike, neutralize, defend. If this is attacking you again, then you'll take two damage then. Um, but you can't ever reduce that because you can't ever get rid of that. So that's the minimal damage you can take next turn. So I would lean towards actually going Survivor Defend Defend, which is the option you didn't actually consider at all here, uh, just because it's going to make me take zero damage this turn. And I think I can get out of this fight without taking more damage. Obviously, if this enemy is attacking next turn, then um, you can't get around that because you only have one defend, but you're never getting around that. So I think you don't actually have to take more damage by not striking this here. What you do is okay, though. Um, so this is not a huge deal, but uh, yeah, it's just something that you that you could do. Um, next, let's jump ahead a bit. Uh, you take footwork here. I like that. Uh, footwork is really, really strong. Then you go to a shop. Um, now the shop here, you remove a strike, which is fine. If you're going to remove a card, I think you should remove a strike at this point. Probably you have the footwork. Uh, you have to be a little bit worried because particularly of the elites, uh, you need to have enough offense to be able to kill quickly, like I mentioned earlier. But um, also your boss, if you looked at your boss, it's the slime boss. And you'd like to be able to have some burst damage on the slime boss uh, with be able to get more favorable splits. Um, having said that, I think removing a strike is still probably fine. Your cards that you're going to pick up are more likely going to be offensive than defensive in nature, so that's okay. 
but I would prefer just taking another footwork rather than a card removal at this point. Uh, I think this footwork is going to just help defend you more. Um, but this is not necessarily a huge thing. It's just footwork is such a great card. Removing cards is also really good, though, so not maybe the hugest deal. Uh, here, you remove another card, and that's definitely the right thing to do. You remove a strike. Uh, well, I'm not going to find the exact timestamp, but you remove a strike. Uh, at this point, you're dangerously low on offense. You have three strikes, and it neutralizes all of your offense. I'm not sure that it's wrong to remove the strike per se. Maybe you should remove a defend, but I'd still lean, I think, towards removing the strike, but you need to be really uh, starting to think about and worry a little bit about whether you have enough offense, particularly because you've got a couple of elites coming up relatively soon. Um, let's skip ahead a little bit here to... You play this combat pretty well. Let's skip ahead to... Uh, after this combat, uh, your, your reward choices. Here you don't take anything. I think I might have taken any of these, honestly, over nothing, which is kind of surprising. Uh, deflect is going to work well with your footwork. Lets you play four cards in a turn, which is something you have a little bit of trouble doing right now uh, with only three energy. It's not great. It's not horrible. The slice I would only consider. Similarly, it lets you play more cards in a turn, but because you're low on offense. I think I'd take the Masterful Stab, though, because you are set up to, to be pretty defensive, so you're unlikely to be taking a ton of damage. Uh, and then it deals a lot of damage. And like I said, you need more offense. So I think I would lean towards the Masterful Stab here, but I would strongly have considered any of them. You end up taking nothing. Um, not the worst thing ever, I guess. Um, yeah. Let's move ahead towards, I think, 546 is the next thing I have. Oh, you upgrade a, a neutralize, and you say that you almost always upgrade that first. So I don't like almost always upgrading neutralize first, and in general, I think I would like, I generally like to upgrade uh, footwork first. Uh, in this case, I actually think the neutralize is right, and there's a couple reasons. One, the damage isn't nothing, although it's pretty negligible. Two, weakness is uh, a 25% damage reduction, uh, and so extending that for an extra turn, it depends on how much your the other person is attacking you for. The footwork is going to save you one extra damage for every skill you play. The neutralize is going to save you extra damage. Uh, so against the gremlin knob, neutralizes upgrading is a lot better. Uh, against the Log of Ulan, it's pretty close. Um, I think the Neutralize is a little bit better. Um, against the Sentinels, the footwork is better. Um, you end up getting the Sentinels, but you can't know that at this point. So overall, I, I think uh, upgrading the Neutralize is the right play here, but it's it's while it's better than your other starting cards to upgrade almost all the time, like it's better than Strikes or Defends for sure, and sometimes the Survivor, usually the Survivor, I like to prefer... Let me rephrase that. I usually prefer upgrading Neutralize before I upgrade Survivor. Um, also because you're always playing the Neutralize every time it comes up. Uh, so you're always going to get the benefit of it. Um, anyway, uh, in this case, I like what you did here, but I, I, would not, I don't like that you say that you basically just always do it by default without thinking. You should think about it. Uh, this fight you play pretty well. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the strategy here. Uh, you say that you usually go for the one with the lowest HP. Usually the strategy you want to you want to kill one of the outside ones first because they're always in sync with each other and you don't like the things being in sync because two attacks on the same turn is a lot harder to deal with than uh, one attack each turn. Uh, the way that, that the math works out, you're more likely to get a split of attack and defense rather than all attack and all defense. So generally, you want to you want to kill one of the outside guys first, and then uh, which of the outside guys you should do the one with lower HP in general, and then once you're down to two, the uh, you know that are off cycle from each other, you should again usually go for the one with lower HP. There are some exceptions. Um, if you have some huge AOE attack that hurts them all, you should try to equalize a little bit more. If you have, uh, well, anyway, yeah. 
Uh, the artifacting is also going to be something you should look at a little bit. Neutralize would weaken them, except they have artifacting. Uh, you can sometimes try to take advantage of of trying to neutralize the things at the right point or whatever, but uh, it's usually not that big of a deal. The one place where you do something uh, that is a little bit wrong in this fight is here. And here you miscount, and so you eventually realize that you miscount. Uh, you think that you can kill this one, you can't actually. You're going to use the ghost in the jar. I don't think I would use the ghost in the jar, I think I'd just take the damage, but I'm not 100% sure whether that's right or not. Um, but the thing is, if you realize uh, how the math works out, you should do 12 to this, 6 and 6, and then you should use the neutralize on one of the other ones, since the neutralize here brings it down to 1 HP, but you do, you do damages in chunks of 6 or 4, but you're going to you're gonna draw, basically you're going to draw a strike before you draw the neutralize again, and so the strike is going to kill this either way. And so neutralizing one of these both removes its artifacting and uh, also starts the damage in on it. So I would neutralize this one here. Um, probably this is just uh, to do with how you counted. I don't think I'd use the Ghost in a Jar, but that's kind of close. I think it's going to be more valuable later, but again, it's a little bit hard to tell. Anyway, let's jump ahead to... Do, 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 do. You finish the fight pretty well. And then your card reward. Uh, 1028. Okay. So here you talk about you usually would go for the backflip, but you've been passing the zero cost cars and that's inconsistent. You correctly identify this as a sunk cost fallacy. Actually, I think even without the zero, with this, like the, even with the backflip, doesn't necessarily make you that much more inclined to get the zero cost cards because it's just one backflip. Um, Skipping out on the backflip is, I guess, okay. I think it's generally a pretty good card, and it works well with the footwork you have. I would have probably gotten it. Dagger Spray could be good, and if you still had Sentinels as a possibility for the next Elite, I would lean more heavily towards that because you're still low on offense. Uh, you get Piercing Whale. You don't really describe why you get Piercing Whale. Um, I don't really know why you would get Piercing Whale here. The... Uh, Upcoming elites that you can have are single enemies. They don't do multi-attacks, so Piercing Well isn't particularly good against them. And the boss that you have on this floor is the Slime Boss, which I guess Piercing Whale isn't the worst thing against, but it's usually not very good. Basically, without multi-attacks and without multiple enemies, Piercing Whale is equivalent to defending for six, except the Piercing Whale doesn't... Uh, doesn't benefit from your footwork, whereas the backflip does. So after the footwork's in play, uh, the backflip both defends you for one more damage than the Piercing Whale, and it also draws you two cards. The Piercing Whale is better against multi-attacks or against multi-enemy combats, but you're not expecting to get many of those very soon. It's just not that much better. Um, and the backflip has higher upside, I think. So uh, you don't really discuss this at all. I lean towards backflip over piercing whale here. You just kind of get piercing whale despite the backflip just doing more for you in the short term and in the long term, I think. Um, so the only reason to get piercing whale here is if you're worried about multi-enemy or multi-attack enemies kind of later on in the game and you don't think the draw is going to be that important. Uh, this also exhausts, whereas this doesn't, which I think is better for the backflip again. So, uh, yeah, not not super happy with this decision, especially with how little you consider the piercing whale. Um, okay, moving forward. Uh, let's go forward to your gremlin knob fight. Uh, between here, you seem to do pretty well. So your gremlin knob fight... Um, so let's talk a little bit about Gremlin Knob math. Uh, you've played it well up to this point. So the math on the Gremlin Knob, should you play a defensive card or not? Uh, well, a skill, right? And in general, every time you play a skill, this increases its strength by two, which increases every attack from now on by two, and it attacks every turn. 
So if you're playing a defend for five, that's going to block five damage, but you're going to have two more coming in. So effectively, you're blocking three damage this turn. And then the next turn, you're taking two more damage. Uh, and then the turn after that, you're taking two more damage again. So you're plus three health, then plus one health, then minus health. Uh, so basically, if you're going to be able to kill it, either this turn it doesn't matter, obviously, because you just kill it, and so it doesn't matter whether you played the defend or not. Uh, but if it's if you're going to be able to kill it the next turn, then you're going to be ahead three health. If you're going to be able to kill it the turn after that, you're ahead one health. And if it's going to take you longer than that, you're going to be behind. Um, with the uh, ba -ba 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 brain function, with the footwork in play, that gets you one extra turn because it defends you for seven. So the first turn it's five and then three and then one. Um, weakness and vulnerability also play in here though. So in this case, this is gonna, you have uh, three, I guess you, you upgraded your footwork. Um, anyway, you have three, so it's eight here. So here it's gonna defend you for six this turn. Then the next turn you're gonna be up four health. Then the next turn you're gonna be up two health. Then the next turn you're gonna be up zero. I think that that is long enough that this is actually correct to play this defend here, right? Eight, and then um, also, uh, well, I guess the thing is, right, It because you are vulnerable, then this makes it three damage for every turn you're vulnerable. But because this is weakened, that's going to reduce it back again. I think the defend is right to play here, but it's close call. Um, now, uh, the rest of it, let's see, there's 1335. Yeah, so here you play a survivor and an unupgraded defend. Obviously, this is just a small, stupid mistake. Uh, the upgraded defend just defends you for more. You should have played it instead. It's just strictly better. You must just not have looked and seen that this one was upgraded and this one wasn't. Uh, so that's not a strategic thing, just, you know, a little bit of uh paying attention um then your card reward after this fight yeah none of these cards is really great for your deck i would kind of be thinking about the quick splash maybe the predator just because you still need offense in this deck you don't have much offense uh which is going to be potentially a problem for you uh, so i don't really like any of these cards but i'm kind of hurting for offense and i don't have much time um do not have much time to get that before the the boss on this floor which is when i'm going to need it so then okay this fight there's some really subtle stuff uh okay so here yeah um there's some really subtle stuff usually you're going to want to play your footwork this fight is guaranteed to be short, though, and you want to try to, to kill this guy before he runs away. Um, so this is one of the few cases I would think about not playing my footwork. If you play the Crippling Cloud here, you're going to get the four poison in, which is going to be about as long as the fight takes. It usually takes a little bit longer on average. Um, you can play one of your upgraded defense or your survive. That's going to also weaken this guy for two turns. Uh, 11 with weakness is going to turn into 8, so one of your defensive cards is going to defend you fully, and then you can strike it. The footwork uh, will only get its its value in here if the fight is going to go long enough. Um, because this fight is going to go short enough, and especially because he's only going to attack you two to three times, uh, the footwork is less likely to be worth it here. This is very unusual in particular to these guys, so again, this is why I say it's subtle. So, But I think the right play here is... Uh, crippling chill and defend because this poison over time is going to do damage and then the weakness over time is also actually also going to save you some damage that's going to wear off after too long but uh the fight again he's not attacking you that long so that's a better play there really um but this is really subtle um and then yeah so here you take the poison stab and you say that you think it's just a good card um I guess it may be the best thing for you here. In general, though, I, I don't think it's a very good card. Uh, it attacks for, effectively, it's an attack for nine damage for one energy, which is okay, but not great. And then the turn after it does two damage, and then the turn after it does one. So if, 
if the fight is going to last a few more turns, then it's an attack for uh, 12, which is pretty good, but not fantastic. Um, it's probably a good pickup here. Bouncing Flask can be better, but of course the two energy is a big deal. So this is actually probably a good pickup here. Um, I think you rested and you didn't need to. Again, I don't think you you want to rest. Um, oh, you're at 36 health. Yeah, resting's probably good. Uh, let me see if I remember this right. You, yeah, you rest here. That's probably right. 36 health is kind of low. Um, you might be able to make through. You might not. Okay, so the slime boss. The thing about the slime boss is you want to uh, split it on as low HP as possible. You don't generally want to split it as fast as possible. Sometimes you split it early because you need to avoid a ton of damage coming in, but generally you want to split it on as low as HP as possible because then after it splits there's less HP for total for you left to fight, right? If it splits out 70 then you have 140 HP left to deal with. If you can get it to split at 50 you only have 100. So it's a, it's a big difference. So you want to burst down right as you split it and you want to try to split it with as minimal HP as possible. Um, okay so here yeah here's a subtle thing I think you play the crippling cloud I think the poison stab would be better crippling cloud is going to do four damage now then three then two then one uh, for a total of ten the poison stab is going to do six damage plus the three from the poison now so nine damage then two then one for a total of twelve so that's more damage and more damage faster and then also the crippling cloud is going to be left in your deck it's going to be more useful later on when there's more targets to both poison and especially weaken. And the weaken is less important now, uh, I think. Maybe that's not right. I have to I have to think about the weaken vis-a-vis -vis whether he's still going to be weakened when he attacks you. Um, but anyway, I, I think I would lean towards playing the poison stab here, but that's a pretty small thing. Um... So you start to do the math here, which is pretty good. Uh, you just attack him really quickly here, which is probably not good. Um, I would seriously be thinking about holding off here. He has a little bit of poison on him, which is not going to be enough to split him, but he's going to be real close next turn, and then you may be able to attack him for more. Uh, two strikes, though, is at least kind of close to... Uh, well, and the other thing is the Mercury Hourglass deals damage. Two strikes is close enough that it might be the best you can do. Um, if you draw two strikes again, though, or the Poison Stab at all, or, or even Strike and Neutralize, then that's going to be more damage. He's going to split with a lower HP. And uh, question mark, question mark, question mark means he's not doing anything to you this turn. Uh, it also is a little bit better for your happy flower. So I think you shouldn't have uh, just struck him all that much here. But okay, this is also a little bit subtle. And you did actually catch it in your own video, so that's good. So let's skip ahead to here. Which target you want to strike here? Um, you say you almost always go for this one. Uh, well, that may be fine in some cases. But it really depends on your deck. This one, the difference between them, this one applies frail and this one applies weak. So frail is going to hurt you if you are trying to defend. And so if you're trying to do a lot of defense over a long period of time, you want to avoid that. This is the one you want to go after. On the other hand, if your plan is to uh, strike them down more, then this is the one you want to go after. Um, so it's very deck dependent. Uh, your choice here is fine. I think you're kind of close to what they're kind of similar to each other. Um, but again, you want to have them split on minimum possible HP. So 1543. Here you decide to strike the front, which is going to make it split. Um, I think I would strike the back. I think I would try to make this sky split with less. Uh, less HP again. Um, it's a little bit tricky just because uh, 
this is going to make you frail, double frail here. And that's something you generally try to avoid. But I think that it's worth it to... You also have one uh, fewer attacker on you next turn. In fact, you have two fewer attackers on you next turn if you wait to split. Uh, because this guy is going to have... Um, he's not going to be hitting you. He's going to split next turn for sure. Uh, and then, so you just have this guy, whereas since you split him now, you have this one, this one, and this one, and all of them can be attacking you. Um, the bigger point, though, is actually you play one of these defends. Um, you play one of these defends, and there's nothing to defend against, so you should play both the slimes. Um, yeah, and then 1830. So here, in general, uh, you want to be focusing down one of them rather than trying to make this split. If you make this split, you're going to have four things hitting you, potentially. That's good with your Mercury Hourglass, but you need to get stuff off the battlefield or you're going to be taking too much damage. Uh, you kind of waffle around. You kind of catch that, but... Uh, it ends up being that this ends up killing you, this thing. So um, here you should do math to figure out if you can kill a thing rather than, uh, well, kill the front thing. You need to minimize the damage you're taking in a little bit. Neutralizing this saves you more damage. Uh, this is on 17 health. 6 plus 3 is 9. This is 13. This is 17. So you could totally... Uh, eliminate this and then defend for, I think this defends for six, so you'd take 12. What you actually do, and then you wouldn't have to deal with this in future turns, what you actually do is make this guy split. Uh, so you take less damage now, but in future it's worse. Uh, what you did is probably fine, because you're on pretty low health, uh, but it leaves you in kind of a bad situation. Yeah, and then here, here there's just, I have no idea why you play this slime here. First of all, if you're going to do this, you should play the survivor over one of the unupgraded defense. It just defends you for a couple more. Um, but then you're taking in so much damage here, you can't afford to play the slime. You need to play the survivor. Uh, and that would have saved you like eight, eight uh, damage here. So you'd be on 14. And yes, you'd have one more slimed in your deck. But okay, you would have survived this turn at least. And then next turn, you're still going to have some difficulties. But uh, yeah, that was just a big misplay. OK, so uh, that's the thing here. The big takeaway is still a little bit more planning and, and planning ahead in particular, um, making sure that you have enough offense for the enemies that you're fighting, and then a little bit of route planning. Um, but not, not too terrible in any spot here. Um, there's a few kind of stupid mistakes that you still made that are just generally for sure wrong. But uh, for the most part, you played reasonably well. But there are some still st still some things to clean up and then some bigger strategic things, which you'll get better at as you learn the enemies, the elites, and the bosses in particular um, more. You you'll, you'll learn how to play around them more. Anyway, uh, please leave comments, questions, both Jake and anyone else on... Uh, what you think should have been done. I realize this video is like 50% longer than the original thing. So maybe I talk too much. If you think that, please also mention that. Uh, but uh, all right, this is uh, Wandering Winner signing off from this, uh, from the Slay the Spire coaching series or discussion series. Thanks. <laughs>